Hey guys, what's up? Mike here with uh, another review for the week. Um, or it's a couple things. Um, I guess I forgot to review this when it came out, but I'm gonna review it now. Um, along with Spider Man. Um, so for me, Spider Man, I actually have two issues. One I didn't review. Uh, six seventy nine point one, which is a point one issue when Marvel's point one initiative to get new readers to jump on, and six eighty, which came out yesterday. Um. So 679.1, um, it has an interesting cover. I really like the cover, actually. I like the direction they took with it. Um, I'm not too fond of the way, the the underarmed webs. Um, I never really liked that Spider-Man design. I still don't. Um, but it's, I like the cover. It's a very interesting. Um, so 679.1, um, I guess it came out about two weeks ago. I think. Yeah, it came out in February. Probably, I think the second third week of February um, so um, for those who don't know uh, Marvel's point one initiative basically it's a jumping on point onto comics so basically you don't need to know anything about comic books if you pick up point one it's a brand new starting point in the storyline and actually this one 79.1 um, actually does a good job of um, of creating a um, of, uh, of creating a good jumping on point so it starts off with um, it. The issue actually starts off from the point of view of one of Peter Parker's coworkers, um, Uatu Jackson. Um, he's actually named after the Watcher. And um, so um, he so he's talking about it. it basically, he recasts Spider Island. How everyone got superpowers but him. Um, and how he he met his he finally gets to meet his idol, Mr. Fantastic, who's who's in Horizon Labs, um, trying to find a cure for the spider disease going around, and he doesn't get to like really like um, meet him because um, he needs he's taking blood samples from people who have the disease, you know, and he never got infected, he never got the spider powers. So then we see um, Peter Parker go back to his point of view and once again um in the in the book actually the 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 spider-man has the webs under his arms um i don't like that but i mean it's not a big deal i don't know why they're there it's just silly he doesn't glide and just having webs there seems impractical um so you see him um he's getting um so he's on his way to work he picks up some bagels for the office and he sneaks into um horizon labs through the roof access and um he, he gets into his office and he sort of um he sort of um comes you know someone knocks on his door in Zuatu and Zuatu sort of questions him he's like how'd you get in here and I see you come in I've been here since here since this and then and Peter sort of is like you know I've been here all night um and Uatu's like you know it, you're you're pretty weird you sing you, you work in your underwear, you play loud music, you sleep in the lab. He's like, are you homeless and stuff? And Peter's, no, he's just... So Peter's working on something. Um, and, um, you know, it, it he sort of tinkers with it and it, you know, almost goes off and it cuts himself. He cuts himself. And, um... And you, you, you find out who was in Lab 6, who was like the big secret. It was, it was a real big secret about who it was. And we found out it's, um, this is going to be a spoiler for some of you people um, if you haven't read Spider Island. But um, it's, sort of, it's sort of integral that I tell you who it is, just for the plot summary. Um, it's uh, Michael Morbius, uh, the vampire. Um, you might remember him, from some of you from the, the anime series, you know, Morbius. Um, he, he drained everyone's plasma and shit in the cartoon series. So, um... The next day, Peter he he leaves, and you see Uatu and him arrive at work, and you see um, Peter like his fire sense goes off in outside Lab Six, and him and Uatu sort of are sensing that something's wrong, and they decide to find out who's in Lab Six, and they do, and Uatu and Peter they create a a flow chart of who could possibly be in there, and they think it's either. Um, and there's Mr. Sinister, maybe Doctor Doom, um, the Lizard, um, just random supervillains, Modok, the Jackal, Dark Beast. No, it could be, it could be really being anyone. 
So Peter decides that you know what, I'm gonna he's gonna go find out. So he he goes he changes into spi his spider costume, and we find out that um that Max has been Max is friends with Mo Michael Morbius. They were colleagues, and that they're tr and they're trying to use the spider cure that Morbius helped create to cure himself. Um, so Morbius tested on himself, and it doesn't work. He 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 goes into like this bloodlust type thing. And he goes crazy, and then Spider-Man busts out and starts fighting uh, Morbius. And you know they fight, and Uatu is like, you know, this is awesome. And you find out he has she has in his lab different suits or like tools for a different situation, you know, just in case ghouls attack or werewolves or zombies. And he pulls out his vampire fighting kit. So Uatu um, gets his vampire fighting kit, and they start fighting Morbius. And you know. Um, they start just kicking ass, I guess, and they they sort of hit him with like a like um like a sun grenade and knocks him out, and they put him back into his lab. But at the same time, you know everyone doesn't trust Max. You know they they essentially let, he's laying a monster who they who they feel is a monster work with them, and and Peter is in trouble. You know Max doesn't like that Peter let Spider Man in here. You know this is all Spider Man's fault. Um, and you see Morbius back in his office, and he's he's trying to still find a cure, but it needs to be tested, and he's still tested on another friend. And um, you see um, Kirk Connors in the sewers. So um, so Dan Slott has brought back not only Morbius but Kirk Connors, who was actually a prevalent character in um, the Amazing Spider-Man in the Shed arc. If you guys read that, but if you didn't, not big deal. So six uh six seventy nine point one. This is actually a pretty solid issue in terms of what it's meant to do. It's meant to be a jumping on point and it it does exactly what it's meant. Um it introduces not only the co workers that Peter works with, but Peter um as Spider Man. Everyone knows who Spider Man is, Peter Parker. They, and and it explains, you know, what happened recently. Everyone has superpowers. Mr. Fantastic tried to help, but they found the cure. You know, and this, and they introduced Morbius, they introduced Dr. Connors. You know, they did a very good job. There's a little humor in it. Um, and the main writer for this isn't actually Dan Slott. The main writer for this is uh, Chris Yost, who is currently working on uh, Scarlet Spider. So he has experience. And uh, I believe Chris Yost, you know, he, he's been writing a lot of things recently. Um, but yeah, 679.1, good issue. And especially if you guys want to jump into comic books. It's a great way for you to to jump in without having to read like uh, like three hours of Wikipedia or go through comb through hundreds or tons of trades. No, there's no need for that. This is a great way for anyone to get into comic books. Um, and I like that Marvel's doing this point one initiative to help like gather interest for new readers. Um, and it even uh, like helps like old readers like myself can enjoy a book like this. This is a good book. Um, story wise, story wise good. I like the fact that they revealed Morbius to the rest of the world. I sort of like the fact that he's trying to find a cure and he's willing to test it on Dr. Connors. And um, I'm, I'm sort of like in the dynamic, like, you know, regardless of Spider-Man being a hero, he's still considered sort of a menace. Um, Art-wise, um, the art was done by, um, I, who was art done by? Oh, it was done by Matthew Clark. Um, in honesty, I don't really like the whole web under the arms thing. Um, the art was good in certain cases. He drew, uh, I guess, his, the way he drew certain characters. Where he, I don't like the way he drew Peter, personally. His the way he drew Peter Parker was weird. Um, it was a, little, I guess, it was a little, in, I guess, interesting compared to the the way um the current the, the the usual rotation of artists have been drawing him. In um in um this yeah he his it's it's a little interesting um to say the least like when Peter Spider Sense went off he made a weird face um but as Spider Man his Spider Man solid great job on Spider Man but as I said I don't like the web things so I'm gonna be giving this issue a four um out of five it's a great issue you know gets the job done all right so um I'm gonna be now I'm gonna be reviewing uh 680. 680 Spider-Man in space. Um, I've been looking forward to this issue for a while, not only because you know, um, Spider-Man in space, but um, just because 
in two more issues, 682, um, Ends of the Earth starts with Doc Ock trying to be a douchebag, an even bigger douchebag, and it's Spider-Man versus the Sinister Six, some people who he hasn't fought in a while. And it's a chance for him to, to go to town and, like, you know, bring out this new suit that everyone's, that everyone's sort of, there's mixed feelings about, but I'm interested in. Um, so 680, um, it actually starts off with um, the usual Marvel recap, but it starts off with Ad Horizon Labs. And um, Jonah is there, J. Jonah Jameson, the current mayor of the city. He's there trying to talk to his son, who's um, an astronaut now, John Jonah Jameson, who's in space. And you, you sort of get this, you, Dan Slott has does a good job of showing that regardless of um, how Jonah acts, like he acts like an ass most of the time, he does have feelings. And, like, he is, like, you know, a good person. Like, he sort of is a good person like at heart in certain situations but he's still like a big total jerk so the signal gets cut off and and Jonas just starts yelling at everyone and you know the his glory grant his um secretary says regardless of you yelling that's like oh he's like do you know me he's like I yell that's my thing um so the scientists are trying to figure it out and it's not working and Peter zooms off and he decides you know what I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go save John so he goes to the actually back to the building, uh, home of the Fantastic Four and the Future Foundation, to go get help. So when we get there, um, we actually see an interesting scene. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, you see Johnny Storm, who is back, and um, he's actually watching. There's TV on, but he's actually singing. And they this, they take a page out of Risky Business. If you guys have seen Risky Business, um, some of you might not have not, but it's the scene where Tom Cruise sings in his underpants and the t sh and the white um shirt, um rock. Um, rock band actually did a, a couple spoofs of it using like um, Heidi Klum and stuff and um, other like rock stars and Taylor Swift I guess sort of had her, her own spoof but he, he pulls a risky business but he doesn't sing uh, old time rock and roll he sings on Friday by Rebecca Black, Rebecca Black so it's actually really really entertaining and then Peter gets there and he's like no no why are you singing this and and Johnny sort of admits, you know, the song's catchy, and then Peter's like, what are you doing? He's like, Johnny says, you know, he's watching TV, the kids went on a field trip to the Savage Zone, so, you know, I'm catching up on everything I've missed since I've been dead. So, um, Johnny refuses, Johnny doesn't want to go into space, and Peter's like, you know what, he, he just ruins TV for everyone, and not only for everyone, but for, um, um, for Johnny. And, um, and it's good. Um, so they go into space using the Future Foundation's uh, spaceship. And Johnny's just joking around. He's like, you know, this is a road trip. We haven't been hung out in a while, you know, since he's been dead. He's he's playing the dead card. You know, I've been dead. I can't do anything wrong. So Max Modell, head of Horizon Labs, goes to talk to Jonah. And Jonah, you know, sort of flips out. He's like, regardless of whose fault it is, he blames Horizon Labs. And he, he tells Max, you know, I finally see that, you know, not... Not only is Horizon Lab dangerous for New York, but it's dangerous for everyone. And I guess I understand where Jonah's coming from. He he already lost his wife, and now his son's life is on the line. And he, he you know, and he's already had a falling out with his father. He's really in a bad place in his life, and you know, losing his son is only going to push him over the edge. So they get to this uh, space station and they dock, and there's no one answering, like no crew members. It seems po they've lost power. And when they get on, um, you know, Peter's spider sense goes crazy. And when they look, it's the ship is filled with octobots. So we now know that you know Doctor Octopus has a has a hand in this. Johnny decides to flame on, and that burnt starts burning, using up all the oxygen in the station. It's just just lazy, like fl like frying everything. Peter can't really use his web shooters because there's no gravity. So they're really just you know up a creek without a paddle, and. Um, and after they get their asses saved by um, John Jonah Jameson, and John actually pulls the most awesome line. One of the most awesome lines, he'd probably say, you know, come with me if you want to live. And then we get to see um, the Sinister Six in their underwater base. And Mysterio is telling Dr. Octopus, you know, you're your Octobot. Some of them went offline, and Dr. Octopus is like, this can't happen. I need to destroy the space station. 
like this has to happen for his plan to work this is his only chance so um Johnny and Peter they meet up with John and they try to head to they head to the load um the loading dock where one of the space shuttles they have to get off and you find out what happens to the crew and you see that the crew has been actually been taken over by um these octobots and they're like zombies essentially and they're surrounded and that's what the issue ends um all in all this issue is actually really good um the creative team is actually um dance lot chris yas um gisupe kamakoli um frank diamarda and klaus johnson jansen klaus jansen um I just, I've, if you guys have watched my previous Spider-Man reviews, um, you guys know I don't like Yusupe Kamakoli's art, and I still don't like it. His art is unappealing to me personally. He just he he does the square jaw thing with heroes, like when they're outside a costume, and it just doesn't work. I don't really like. It's really unappealing. They're really it just look really weird. Um, everyone's looks very generic and s similar, except with different colored hair in certain cases. Um otherwise um but as i said um them in costume i enjoy i enjoy them in costume it works for them when they're in costume outside of costume it's bad for me um so dan and chris yas who i guess co -wrote, like wrote this together um did a good job uh, this issue is actually really good um i like it was very lighthearted at certain points you know at certain times and you know it's very heavy at certain times and i like that mixture that especially like this is gonna be a two-part arc because you know, not all comic book writers can do that two-part arcs. You know, some comic book writers work better with long arcs. Um, but Dan Slott's very does very good jobs with a very good job when it comes to these two-part short mini like sections, and before doing a major long like arc of like four or five issues. So you know, great issue by um, Dan Slott and Chris Yaws. Great job. Um, as I said, I enjoyed the, the 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 risky business reference. I enjoyed the Terminator reference. Um, you know, you know, regardless of the the, the dangerous situation, it was very lighthearted, and that's actually sometimes a little light humor, especially in a Spider-Man book. You know, Spider-Man's known for his wit, you know, his his witty like sayings and like witty like um, you know, the things he says to villains. So you know, he it's the lightheartedness helps a lot in this type of book. Um, not much else to say. Um. About it. I'm really excited for Ends of the Earth. I uh, hope you guys are too if you're following Spider Man. Um, so, uh, thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think about this. If you liked it, if you didn't, um, I have a bunch of more stuff coming out. But um, it's pretty, I'm pretty tired, so I might take a nap or go to sleep. It's pretty late, I think. So, uh, I guess I'll talk to you. I'll uh, leave you off, leave with this. Um, have a good weekend, guys. Enjoy whatever books you're reading. And, um, you know, I hope you find something that you if you read something you find it enjoyable have a good time